Hello everyone, this is Nifty255, and welcome to my Kerbal Space Program modding tutorial series, Volume 1, Custom Parts, Episode 3, Custom Behaviors. In today's episode, we will discuss the process of creating custom behavior for either existing parts or any custom parts you or someone else have created. Keep in mind that the following tutorial requires a fair knowledge of programming concepts and the C-sharp programming language. It is also recommended that you have a fair knowledge of programming in Unity 3D. Also, there are a few extra files such as sound effects that I will be using in this tutorial. If you wish to follow along, you can get these files by downloading the zip file from the link in the description. With that said, let's go over what you will need to create custom behaviors. The first and only program you will need for this tutorial is Microsoft's Visual Studio. The exact version is up to you, but the version must clearly state that it supports C Sharp. I will be using a version that was created before the entire Visual Studio suite was combined into one program. This version is Visual C Sharp Express 2010. It is easiest to find this version by Google searching Visual C Sharp Express 2010. The first result will take you to Microsoft's site and automatically scroll down to the correct version. Click the correct option and a download section will appear. Select your language and click Install Now. After installing, the program will ask you to register the product. This is free and does not need to be done immediately. However, if you continue to delay registration past 30 days, the program will stop allowing use until registered. Once you have installed and started your version of Visual Studio, you will be greeted with a screen similar to this. From here, you can create new code projects or open previous projects. We will create a new project. After clicking said option, this dialog will appear. In order to create a mod for uh, Kerbal Space Program, we must select Class Library. Choose your name for the project at the bottom, which will typically be the name of your mod, but keep in mind that the name here must be without spaces or special characters. I will name mine Tutorial Mod. Click OK. After the project has been created, we must next add a reference to KSP's code library. This is what allows partial access to the game code, and by extension, the ability to affect the game. To the right of the window, you will find the Solution Explorer. Right-click on the References entry and select Add Reference. This window will appear. Navigate to the Browse tab if you are not there already, and then navigate to your KSP game folder. It doesn't matter if you use version 0.23 or 0.23.5, as the code we are concerned with hasn't changed. However, if you want your mod to be compatible with 0.23, you must use a 0.23 install. I will be using a 0.23 install myself for this tutorial. Once you are in the game folder, Open the KSP Data folder, and then the Managed folder. Select Assembly Sheet C Sharp DLL and also Unity Engine DLL by control clicking. Select OK. Your project now has limited access to the game code. Next, I'm going to briefly explain a few concepts of programming. Firstly, we will discuss inheritance. In programming, inheritance is the concept of one class inheriting the variables and functions of another, such that, it, that the inheriting class becomes a more specific version of the inherited class. This helps reduce the amount of code written when you want to define multiple things that have a few things in common and yet have a few differences. Here is an example. In programming, these two vehicles have a lot in common, such as the fact that they both have engines, wheels, weight, maximum speeds, acceleration, and plenty more. So we could define a general class called Vehicle. But since there are differences between the two, we have to create two separate classes that specify the differences and yet still have the common attributes of a vehicle. This is done through inheritance. Next, we have overriding. In the example above, the Vehicle class would have a function called Reverse, among others, since for all intents and purposes, all vehicles can be reversed. This function would perform most of the processes needed to begin reversing the vehicle, but there are some other things you might want to add on, such as a reverse safety device which would beep while in reverse. 
In this case, you can override the inherited classes, or base classes, reverse function in order to add that device. But be sure that, when overriding, you also call the base classes function in your override. Otherwise, the code defined in the base class will not execute. Of course, this can be intended, but not in this case. Now that those concepts are understood, we can make a basic custom module. The module I will be making will monitor the heat levels of all parts and sound an alarm when at least one of them reaches 90% of its maximum heat capacity. Given that, the first step is to rename our first class to something meaningful. Be sure to rename both the code file and the class name. I will name mine Module Heat Alarm. The next step is to inherit the class Part Module. This causes our class to become a module. To inherit a class, simply add a colon and the name of the class you want to inherit to the line which defines our class. Now I will go over a few things that our inheritance has opened up for us. Firstly, we have now gained the ability to access the part this module is attached to, and also the vessel this module's part is attached to. With access to the parent part and vessel, it is easy to perform all sorts of actions, such as exploding the part, controlling the vessel via autopilot, or even gaining access to other parts and interacting with them. Secondly, the inheritance has made a few functions available for override. We will only discuss the most important and commonly used functions. Here are the available functions. The onAwake function is only called once during the loading screen. This is best used if you need to define a single static variable that will be used by all instances of your module. The onLoad function is called once for every part when it is either created or loaded. The argument pass contains all the information that was read from the config file about this module. This can be used to load custom variables. The onSave function is called when the game is saved to let the part save persistent data. You would use this to save custom variables. The onStart function is called every time onLoad is called, just after onLoad. This is where you would establish connections to other modules, parts, or vessels, because it is guaranteed that once this is called, everything else will at least have been created. This is important because errors will occur if you try to access things that haven't yet been created, and the onStart function is the earliest point at which everything is created. The onUpdate function is called every time the game updates. When the game updates, the vessel tells its parts to update, which in turn tells all the attached modules to update. This function is typically where most of your module behavior will go. The onActive function is called whenever this module is activated. A module is usually only ever activated by staging. If your module is set to run from staging, your module will call onActive once its stage has been activated. This is how decouplers work. Once the stage has been reached, module decouples onActive function is called, which breaks the rocket apart. The getInfo function is used to add information to the editor window while hovering over your part. There is a specific formatting syntax in use that I discovered that I will talk about later. The last thing inheritance to part module has opened up is the ability to create custom fields, events, and actions. Fields are variables in the code that can be automatically saved and loaded from the parts config file, whether they are defaults for a ship in the editor or specific variables that can change in flight. Events are functions that can be called in-game by right-clicking the part and pressing a button. An example would be the lock gimbal button on an engine. Clicking that calls a function that, as you might have guessed, locks the gimbal. Lastly, actions are functions that can be assigned to action groups. A typical use of actions is to set the function to simply call a corresponding events function. In the previous example with the gimbal, an action to toggle the gimbal's lock can be set that will simply call the locking or uh, freeing function, depending on the gimbal's current state. Now that we know what tools we have to work with, we can begin to actually program the module. I will begin by defining a variable called alarm threshold, which will be a floating point value. When the part's heat rises above this percentage, the alarm will sound. The next variable will actually hold the alarm sound. To load the sound, I need to import a code file I built for a mod I'm working on. I will explain how it and other utility classes I've built work in a future episode. You can get this class by downloading the zip file linked in the description. I will now load the sound in the overridden onStart function.
Next, I will define a method which will determine the current heat percentage of the given part. Lastly, I will override the onUpdate function to include a check to see if any parts are too hot. If they are, it will begin sounding the alarm. Once you are finished with the module, it is time to build the library file and test it out. Press F6 or click the debug menu and select Build Solution. Next, we need to navigate to the location the project is built to. By default, this is inside a bin folder inside the project directory. Open bin, and then release. There should be a bunch of DLL files here. The one we built and are interested in is named whatever you named your project. I named mine tutorial mod, so the file I want is tutorialmod.dll. Copy this file. Now we need to set up the location in which we will paste that file. Navigate to your KSP install location. Open the game data folder and create a new folder. Name it the name of your mod without spaces. Inside that, create a folder named plugins. Paste the copied DLL file to this folder. At this point, your mod is loading in the game, but there are no parts using your mod. On top of that, the sound file we're using isn't in the right place. Go back to your mod folder and create a second folder called Sounds. Place either my sound here or use your own. Lastly, we need to add the module to a part. For the sake of simplicity, I will be using the part I created in the previous episode. You can use a command part, your own, or the part that I am using. It doesn't matter either way. Open the config file of the part you're using and add the new module like so. Be sure to save it. At this point, your mod should now be functional. Now's the time to test it. Alright, here I am on the launch pad with a setup that's guaranteed to overheat, if not explode. So I'm just going to throttle up. And as you can see, the alarm sounds whenever the part reaches the temperature threshold we set in the code. If you're having trouble getting the needed temperature for testing, try temporarily lowering the threshold in the code. Just remember to rebuild the DLL and copy it over to your mod folder. That's it for today's tutorial. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like to see more tutorials, please do leave a like or a comment. Also, stay tuned for a few more episodes on how to create custom modules. But until then, this has been Nifty255.